move to the next speaker. It's none other than the dashing dynamic Dr. Cyrus Mehta. So the rise of the robots simplifying complex cataract surgical put, case scenarios. Put the volume off. Put the volume off. So it's like Elon Musk telling us about AI. Over to you. All right, let's start. So this is the video I made for ASCRS and ESCRS three years ago. Use capsule hooks in subluxation or drop anchor. This was pre-COVID. So in a grossly subluxated case, if you have a femtosecond laser to help you, it makes a huge difference. Of course, you can do a rexis manually, but you will never get this perfect punched out four, five millimeter rexis like this. It's absolutely impossible to do it by hand. Believe me, I've tried many times. Oh, then use uh, sodium hyaluronate or helon basically to push the cortex away and put capsule hooks. So this I learned from I. K. Ahmed, and he always used to use capsule hooks and never iris hooks and I always used to use iris hooks. <coughs> Suck out the contents. And this is a Gupta ring segment made by Madhu. Railroad it out of the eye. That's pretty straightforward and simple to do. And put in the segment. So you railroad both the double arm suture out of the eye, put the ring segment in, put it in the capsular bag. And now you have a nice capsular bag. And the rexis will center when you tighten it. And in goes the lens. Now for a lens like this, I always stuck in the legs and I try to keep the optic outside. So what if you have a poor rexis, the small rim of capsule? When we initially got the laser, now we weren't really very comfortable with it. This is one of the cases we had where the laser has done punctures in superficial cortex, but not open the capsule. So that's also possible. There was so much extreme subluxation that the laser just couldn't make a rexis. So I had to revert back to the good old trusty forcep. And sure enough, it started running out. I managed to pull it in by pulling it opposite to the direction that it was running out. And I got it in. So I do have a capsular rexis, but it's absolutely at the periphery. So I took out this old device. This was a free sample given to me by Ehud Asiya. It's called the Asiya Anchor. Now they have generation two that Hanita is selling. This was old generation one. This video is about three, four years old. So you pass the suture through the suturing hook. I never thought I'd be showing this video to anyone. Uh, so that's why it's really not very good and neither is it, is it, it is in focus. But he only gave me one sample. So I only have one video of Asiya Anchor. That's why you'll see only one. So that's the anchor lying in there on top of the capsular bag. Suck out the cortex. See, it looks like the anchor will fall inside, but actually there's a, a web of zonules there. So it's just lying there. It's not going to fall in. And now you can enmesh that capsular bag in the two trailing legs of the anchor, which looks like a boat anchor. So you, they throw an anchor overboard and it drags on the chain and eventually it snags on something. And that's the whole idea. And then you just pass the needle twice through the sclera to lock it and pull it tight. So interestingly, this patient was a 10 year old boy. And uh, one year after the surgery got hit on the eye with a ball and anchor bag and everything went inside lens also. Then I took it out and I made a flanging video. So I have a video of me taking out the anchor after the trauma. So here this worked very well until he got hit on the eye. Open up the lens and put it in the capsular bag. So this ended very well. So the device does work. It was frightfully expensive. That's why I never bought any. Uh, however, uh, but of course, if you hit the eye hard enough a year or two after surgery, everything is going to go inside. So now the people think that there's no point doing all these procedures. These are very nice to make videos and put on YouTube and get 5,000 followers after that. However, a better long-term solution would be do a reverse iris fixation or then just flange a lens. I'm doing a lot of flanging and I'm getting better at it. The first few cases are not so good where the lens would tilt and stuff after surgery. But if you get used to it, then it works quite well. So that's what I just wanted to share. Chalo, now you all ask me questions. So Cyrus, what is the technique of flanging? So flanging, I'm basically using Shri Ganesh's technique where you uh, use two 60 proline and a PMMA lens with eyelets. So this PMMA lens with eyelets is few hundred rupees. So many companies, I think Appa also has it, Care has it. And you make a 6 mm tunnel and you push the lens inside and you just flange it. It's very, very simple. You preload the needle with the suture and then push it in so that there's not much manipulation in the eye. 
What's difficult is to do all this suturing and all in the eye. So you do all this outside and then just push the whole complex inside the lens and everything. I have a video. If someone's not come, I'll show it later. Okay. If we have time. Great. Yeah, but flanging. So we don't tie a knot. You just use the low heat cautery and flange the 6 or 5 o the Canabrava yeah, style. The Canabrava technique. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sorry. So even Thank I have you. used it in patients who have like, you know, nowadays I'm seeing more and more patients with a dislocated bag with lens, if you've seen, you know. Yeah. So I'm with a vitrectomy, it's like a trap door. Usually at 6 o'clock, the, uh, the zones are still there. So you just lift it up and then you can go from 6 o'clock if it's a 12 o'clock thing. And flange and it. And flange it, you know, with that. Yeah. You know? So, but you, you should be sure that you have uh, the haptic with it and not just the capsular bag because the summoning rings won't hold on, you know. You should have a flange which goes anterior and posterior to the haptic and then you can just, you know, do it, yeah.